The Biden administration is preparing for the fall of Kabul. CBS News has confirmed that all U.S. Embassy employees, except a small handful of key personnel, are expected to be evacuated in the next 72 hours. The remaining employees will include diplomatic security, top decision makers, including the ambassador, and several security engineers responsible for destroying hard drives and other embassy electronics. It's part of the Biden administration's plans to remove all American diplomatic presence from Afghanistan. The decision comes as the Taliban is rapidly gaining ground on its march toward the country's largest city. The rest of the embassy staff, along with local employees and families, are set to be taken to Karzai International Airport, where a makeshift embassy will continue processing visas ahead of the evacuation. In the meantime, there is news that the Taliban has claimed another major city, Mazari Sharif. Afghanistan's president, Ashraf Ghani, is clinging to power despite growing calls for his resignation. He says he is working with local leaders and international partners to prevent further instability, violence and displacement of the Afghan people. U.S. Marines and soldiers are starting to arrive in Kabul. Roughly 3,000 troops are being deployed to the capital in an effort to secure and remove American diplomats and key personnel from the region. The Taliban seized control of Afghanistan's second and third largest cities, Kandahar and Herat, earlier this week. They are now pressing toward the capital of Kabul. The militant group's reign covers roughly two-thirds of the country. U.S. defense officials fear it could be just a matter of days before Kabul is taken. CBS News foreign correspondent Roxana Saberi is on the ground in the capital with more. <laughs> As the Taliban take territory, they also gain strength. Replenishing their ranks with Taliban prisoners they free along the way. And seizing the spoils of war left behind by retreating Afghan forces trained by the U.S. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby. We are always worried about U.S. equipment that could fall into an adversary's hands. Those adversaries now control more than two-thirds of the country. Yesterday, they captured the capital of Helmand province, where U.S. troops once fought some of their bloodiest battles. Now the Taliban are eyeing what's essentially the Afghan government's last stand. For now, daily life here in the capital, Kabul, appears to be carrying on more or less as usual. But many people here fear this way of life could soon come to an end. Freedom, equality, and the woman rights, all of these things are the issues with the, everyone is concerned about that. They are killing women who, who were born and raised here. What about me? Banafsha Rahimi says her family will stay in Afghanistan. But as a woman who studied on an American scholarship, she needs to flee. You're afraid of being killed if the yeah, Taliban come here? Yeah, I'm afraid of being killed. Like it's, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm like totally sure that I will not survive here. Thousands of Afghans are already escaping, many lining up at Kabul's airport. This video appears to confirm fears of the insurgents' brutality, with a Taliban fighter counting 14 bodies of men executed for fighting back. Roxana Saberi joins us now for more. Roxana, thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Taliban forces are quickly closing in on the capital city of Kabul. What more can you tell us about the Taliban's latest gains? Because they've been alarmingly fast, according to some officials, right? They have been moving at stunning speed, Tom. We know that they have captured at least 21 major cities in Afghanistan in just over the past week, since last week on Friday. Three of those fell just today. That's over half of the provincial capitals of this country. And that's uh, the one that they've captured that's closest to Kabul, where we are, is only 50 miles away. There is heavy fighting taking place in another provincial capital, only 30 miles from where we are here in Kabul, Tom. And, you know, that speed has shocked a lot of national security officials, um, you know, and, and officials for the U.S. government. Um, looking at the Afghanistan government, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has vowed to fight back against the Taliban as they push closer to Kabul. What are they saying about the Taliban's latest victories, though? Yeah, that's right. President Ashraf Ghani made his first public comments since the Taliban made its recent gains in the past several days. He gave a televised speech, and as he said, he vowed to keep fighting. He called for 
uh, remobilization of Afghan security forces, and he showed no signs of giving up def despite all of these defeats across the country. And we have to tell you, Tom, we've seen city after city falling to the Taliban after in these past few days. And some of these U.S. trained security troops have actually surrendered without a fight. Oftentimes they've been leaving behind military equipment. We've seen videos of Humvees, of bases, military bases that the Taliban have seized from those retreating troops. We've also seen a lot of videos on social media of celebrations by the Taliban. Tom. And these are military forces that the U.S. spent nearly two decades uh, trying to build up. Um, as you mentioned, those forces are collapsing. And in your piece, people are clearly scared in, in the country's capital. Um, is that a surprise that these military groups are collapsing um, to the people there? The people we've talked to said they're, the ones we've spoken to said they're very disappointed. They're very surprised. They didn't think that the Taliban would be able to take these cities at such a fast and rapid speed. Many of them are afraid of what the future might hold. Those who can leave, some of them have been leaving, many of them through the Kabul airport, if they can catch a flight. Uh, others want to leave but don't know how. And still others tell us they just feel resigned to the return of Taliban rule here in Kabul. But they are concerned especially about losing those rights that they've gained in the past 20 years since the Taliban had been overthrown by the U.S. invading forces. They don't want to lose their democracy, their human rights, the women's rights that they've gained, especially women tell us that they have been, that they're concerned about not being able to study anymore, to work anymore. And there are also a lot of young people who don't remember Taliban rule, and they are particularly concerned about the future, Tom. Obviously, a very tense and dangerous situation unfolding there. Um, give us a sense of the timeline. Is there a feeling on the ground of when the fight could reach the capital where you are? You know, it's a very good question, and it's anybody's guess. It could happen any day. Uh, we don't know what it will look like. Uh, but as I mentioned, there is heavy fighting taking place about 30 miles from here in a city called Maidana Shah. So the Taliban are quickly closing in. And the feeling here, of course, the mood here is very tense, Tom. You know, there are uh, growing, there's a growing humanitarian crisis on the ground in Afghanistan. The U.S., the U.N., rather, estimates some 400,000 Afghanis have been displaced this year alone. Where are these people fleeing to? And what more can you tell us about the impact these battles are having on the people of Afghanistan? Well, first of all, um, many of the borders have been closed uh, after these Taliban takeovers. Uh, some people were fleeing through the border with Iran on the west. Some people had tried to flee, flee through the borders in the north, but those are essentially closed. Uh, the one with Pakistan on the east, uh, some people are still trying to get through and through the airport at, here in Kabul, as I mentioned. But of course, those numbers are limited. So a lot of people have lost their homes, their belongings, their loved ones who have been killed in the fighting. Some, um, you know, have have tried to flee overseas uh, abroad and others have come to Kabul, but they're homeless. They have nowhere to go. We went to a park today as well as a mosque where people are essentially sleeping outside on the cement, maybe on a thin blanket. We met so many people who lost their brothers, their sisters, their parents. And it was just devastating. A lot of the people had come from the north. They'd fled from the north because the Taliban had attacked those cities. They don't know if they can ever go back. They don't know what their futures hold. And they don't know if the Taliban come here to Kabul where they can go next. Tom. A lot of people only knowing uh, war, a life of war. Roxana Saberi, stay safe on the ground there for us. Thank you for taking the time to chat.